Anime doesn't have the best track record out there when it comes to endings. There are plenty of amazing series out there that somehow end in all of the worst ways possible, despite some of their better qualities. And while sometimes it's just confusing how the series reached the conclusion that they did, ending a story is admittedly pretty difficult. Everyone has their own tastes, some people like really dark and depressing endings, while other people enjoy stories that end happily ever after. It's hard to really identify what more people will like, which makes it kind of understandable that a lot of series end as horribly as they do, as they end up trying to please everyone, which ends up pleasing nobody instead. But Batum, a popular sign in action manga, chose to circumvent this problem entirely. Instead of the normal route of creating one ending to a story, this series creates two, a happy one and a sad one which the audience can pick between at will. Both of these endings follow wildly different paths and conclusions, so let's go through and see which one better caps off the series and which one I prefer. So first off, I'm not going to go through the effort of explaining everything in the story to you guys because I think that would take way too long. Also, spoiler warning, I don't know why you would click on a video about a series' ending if you were worried about spoilers, but eh, here it is anyways. So the light and dark endings of the series both pick up from the very end of the manga and center mainly around the conflict between Ryota and Oda. The two endings seem to diverge in the 119th chapter of the manga, with most of the differences, as I mentioned before, being in the fates of Ryota and Oda, although there are other characters that experience different endings based on the ones you choose. First, let's go down to the path of the dark ending and see what they did right with the story. So one of the biggest mysteries in the story regards Oda's past and the reasons he had for ruining our main character's life. We always got told the story from Ryota's point of view, and while Oda's act of cheating on his girlfriend just to steal Ryota's crush is inexcusable, we always knew that there had to be more to the story than just this amoral act. Oda, while certainly not secure in his morality, always felt like a person who wouldn't commit a crime just for the sake of it. So throughout the story, we waited and waited for Oda's actions to be rationalized, and finally, in the dark ending, we get the conclusion to his story. As far as I could tell, at least in the manga, Oda's past motives only come into focus in the dark ending, as the circumstances where Oda finally confesses his past to Ryota is one that's exclusive to the ending of the story, and there's no proof that Ryota finds out Oda's motivations in the light ending. Obviously, the fact that this information is completely gone in one ending is a massive mark-off for the light route, but let's dive into the past and see how this reveal actually lands. So, in high school, Ryota told Oda, one of his best friends at the time, who the girl he had a crush on was. And at the time, Oda goes out of his way to seduce that girl despite the fact that he already had a girlfriend, leading to his falling out with Ryota. But we learn through this explanation that Oda had an inferiority complex towards Ryota since elementary school, as a girl became friends with Oda purely to pass a love letter to Ryota. After this, Oda trains up to become better than Ryota, eventually demonstrating his superiority by sleeping with Ryota's crush. And that's basically it. Alright, so it's not the best and most complete backstory of all time, I'll admit. Oda has been portrayed as a man with standards, somebody who's willing to cooperate with Ryota in order to save lives, but somebody who would still do anything to save his family back at home. He is always portrayed as a sympathetic man, however, this backstory kind of flies in the face of this. Oda comes across as making a big deal out of nothing. His inferiority complex about a single event in elementary school was the basis for ruining his friendship with Ryota. By the way, I'm not trying to devalue any trauma people may have. Whatever feelings you may have about your past are valid, and no one can devalue that. However, using that trauma not just as a reason to improve yourself, but as a reason to ruin other people's lives is a step too far. This characterization of Oda goes against most of what we thought we knew before. However, its mere existence puts it above the backstory Oda talks about in the other ending, which is non-existent. So moving on from the backstory stuff, after Oda and Ryota have their big emotional blowout about their past, Oda is a step away from killing Ryota's friends, before Ryota steps in and diverts Oda's bomb with his own. The darkness of the cave and general confusing atmosphere causes both fighters to lose track of which bomb was theirs, leading to a Mexican standoff of sorts, with both standing an inch away from death. The mind games that the two engage in are pretty enjoyable and tense, however inevitably the game has to end. Ryota decides to commit to the gamble and trigger his bomb first, using his own body to shield his friends from Oda's blast. Ryota and Oda die together, with Oda fulfilling his role as the villain with the inferiority complex, losing out to Ryota one last time in the end. Ryota in turn fulfills his character arc as well. After living his whole life as a neat, Ryota finally uses his life for good, saving his friends and allowing them to clear the game. When the three surviving members of the game get back to the mainland, they are rewarded for their participation, with the big bad of the series revealing that Himiko is his daughter. He does the whole thing of, join me my child and together we will rule the world, and Himiko just says no and pulls out an incendiary bomb, detonating it and causing the death of the two main villains of the series. Himiko lives on with the memory of Ryota watching on as she continues her fight against all that is bad in the world. Despite being the dark ending of the series, the story ends surprisingly optimistically, with the name of this route seeming to stem just from Ryota and Oda's deaths. I think all things considered, I like this ending a lot. 
It ends Ryota's story pretty well, puts Oda in his place in his final moments, and gives Himiko the chance to shun her fate and kill her jerk of a father, getting revenge for all of her friends' deaths. All in all, it was a pretty good time. I didn't mind Ryota's deaths here as it shows some clear character development, and I also didn't particularly care for his romance with Himiko, which I'll talk about more later on, but everything ends up pretty cleanly, not many loose ends and a pretty satisfying conclusion. On to the light ending now. So the light ending picks up from a very similar place as the dark ending, with Ryota facing off against Oda in a cave while Himiko and Kira watch on trying to survive. On the outside, the drones are still fighting against the military that are trying to rescue the players, with both situations sitting at a standstill. In this reality, Himiko and Kira are able to successfully dodge Oda's bombs, and Ryota lures Oda into a trap, punching him and beating him into submission. I think this victory that Ryota has over Oda is honestly a bit better than the one in the dark ending, as it shows a bit more narrative cohesion. Oda's excuse for stealing Ryota's crush was that Ryota was too weak to do anything about it, so Oda wanted to teach him a lesson. Now Ryota is not only proving his superiority over Oda, somebody who had been a larger-than-life figure to Ryota this whole time, but Ryota also takes the initiative and strikes first, proving Oda wrong. Oda, in turn, doesn't have the most complex finale, he simply just loses to Ryota, leading to the situation being resolved without any deaths. On the outside, these drone combatants, who are basically just civilians who have good motor skills which allow them to control drones efficiently during war, are taken down, and I think this is one of my favorite parts of this ending, because these really annoying enemy soldiers who treated people's lives as a joke finally start to see the cruel realities of war and understand the sins they committed. The main drone operator from that side has a realization that their cat is home alone and will die if left like that, which is how they quantify the reality of death to themselves, leading to them finally feeling guilt for their actions. And honestly, I just thought that was neat. Also, in this ending, one of the employees of Tranos Japan, the company responsible for this horrible game, gets their just desserts and is killed by the hacker on Ryota's side, which she honestly had coming for a very, very long while. Eventually, most all the cast escapes the island and lives happily ever after, living in hiding from the villains. I'll be honest though, one thing I didn't understand was how Ryota's adoptive dad survived the whole ordeal, since at the end of the story he was tied up at the villain's HQ after attempting to stop the game, ending in the deaths of many employees. I really never understood how he got out of that alive, but somebody will educate me about that in the comments. Basically, the final scene in this story is between Ryota and his family, where he tells them he's going to be marrying Himiko. So let me draw your attention to something real quick. Ryota is 22 years old, and Himiko is 15 or 17 years old. Different sources report different things. But either way, why is the 22-year-old Ryota getting married to a minor? I realize there are different laws in different places, and they're both consenting to it or whatever, but marriage? Really? I, I understand how it concludes both of their character arcs, like Ryota's being responsible now and accepting the real world, and Himiko got over her fear of men from being assaulted multiple times, which is just a completely different can of worms. But like, why? <laughs> like, it took me long enough to come to terms with the fact that they were actually together, and then they were suddenly getting married at the end, which I really just... I don't know, it didn't sit right with me, so... That knocks the story down a couple points in my opinion. So that's that. Both of the endings explained and all of the problems I had with them, and everything I think they did well too. In terms of preference, I would say it's pretty close, but I may narrowly prefer the dark ending. I think there isn't much evidence that Oda's backstory comes to light in the other ending, and that's a pretty big deal. I feel like both endings wrap the characters up in pretty equivocal ways, so that was basically one of the only main tiebreakers. If it turns out that Oda reveals his past in both endings and I'm just wrong, then I think the light ending may pull ahead slightly because of the stuff with the drone pilots, which I think was interesting. Despite the weirdness associated with a 22-year-old and a 17-year-old getting married, I think I may prefer that ending slightly. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!